Hello ladies and gentlemen, Panzer here, and welcome to Transport Fever. Now, I did the first look video of this. I know it's not been that long ago since I've done it, but um, a few of you did actually ask me to do a series on this, and I was debating whether or not I wanted to do it. I haven't really done a proper Let's Play series for a very long time. I know there's Planet Coaster, but that really wasn't quite working in the way I wanted it to. So I thought, let's start afresh with a new game, and one that I've actually put a decent amount of hours into, and that's Transport Fever. So, what we're going to be doing for this series is, I'm going to do a few episodes, and we're going to start, uh, we're going to start a game, and we're going to run the company, kind of from start to finish. There's no end goal here, but it's just kind of like, I want to build up a transport company that will go from road vehicles to trains to ships to, to planes. We're going to cover everything. So once we've done all of that, we've more or less completed our objective. Now, I am going to be running this with mods, and the mods are going to be introduced into the save files if they work, uh, doing that. Uh, and I'm going to add more if more come out while the series is ongoing. Now, if you guys have a mod in mind that you want me to take a look at as well, you can always link it in the comments as well, and I'll take a look at it. If it's something that I think can work with the current game, then we will take a look at that. So, without further ado, let's get on with it. So, these are going to be the parameters that we're running with right here. So, our start year is going to be 1960, and the reason I'm going that far along is because that's sort of the middle year. So, it's sort of the mid-game, but because we're running this with mods, it's going to be a bit different. So, first things first... We've got a bunch of uh, vehicle mods. We've got the uh, Actom or Alstom uh, Citardis. I believe this is a, a tram. Uh, we also have the British Rail Class HST, the Class 43, which is a diesel high-speed train. We might actually make use of this if we can. It's a bit hard to get high-speed trains working well, but this will sort of sit in between the the sort of standard commuter trains, and then the TGV, and so on. So, it's going to be a little bit difficult to make it work, but I do want to get this in the game at some point in the series. We've got the Road Stations mod, we've got the Class 111 German trains, we've got the German DB trains, the Icarus 256, which is a Russian bus we might not use too much of, but we'll see, and we've got the Mercedes-Benz Sotaro bus as well, so a couple of different buses. We've got a slight variation on the railroad crossings, and uh, we also have the, I believe these are locomotives. Yeah, these are locomotives that are added to the game as well. We've got the Norwegian MTR Express. We've got the Tatra T3 from the uh, Czech Republic. And we've got the uh, sort of two-car version of that, if you will. Uh, the duplex TGV, the V200. Uh, we've got increased vegetation. This might kill the frame rate, but it's sort of... You know, I, I think it looks better that way. We've got a sort of a cargo wagon, which I thought looked nice. Uh, might not use too much. But the, the big one, of course, time progression, four times slower is what we're going to be using. And the town building style mod, which will make our buildings in the towns look a little bit more interesting. We've got the British Rail Car Class 37. And uh, we also have a uh, reskin of a, a train from Europe as well, and as well we've got the NSB Stadler Flirt as well. So, slight variation on the one that we were using earlier, but uh, yeah, we've got a couple more trains to work with here. So, that's basically what's um, happening now. All of these will come out as and when they are assigned to um, things like the Sotaro and of course the NSB, uh, the uh, MTR Express and so on. Those are... Uh, sort of the 2000s era, so we're going to see if we can get all the way to that stage and unlock these things, but who knows what's really going to happen here. So, we are of course going to be playing on Europe, there's a lot of European mods, so that's what I'm working with. We're starting on easy, so that we get the best chance of going, otherwise we're going to go bankrupt, and it's going to be flat, and a one-to-one -one world format. So, that is the scale that we're working with here. So, without further ado... <laughs> I know, it's a little bit of a long setup, but there's a lot to get through for the uh, first episode. So, um, yeah, I think this seed looks good as well, so uh, let's begin and see how we get along. Alright, here we are. So, it takes a little bit of time to load, especially on a large map. I was debating going with a medium map simply because it might kill the performance a lot earlier than we might want to, but I kind of fell back with the large maps anyway. Um, this is quite a populated map, actually. There's a lot of cities here. A lot of them very close together. In fact, if we just have a look at the contours, this looks 
fairly flat through the middle there, all the way through. I like the look of this. This could very well be a good starting point, because this area here is very, very flat. Um, from Corbridge up to Stonehouse and Aid over here, uh, down to New Haven is very flat. In fact, the route from New Haven to Thursk is also pretty flat as well, all the way to Launceston as well. So, yeah, flat map. Very, very flat map. In fact, up to Southam as well, up here. And we've got a nice little lake as well that we could make use of, hopefully. Um, so I'm thinking, let's see how Stonehouse is doing. 301 population. Aid's got 299. Fairly comparable sort of cities. This one's a bit smaller. Corbridge, 158. Uh, and it looks like New Haven, 299. So I think this is sort of what could be our starting point. I don't know if I want to go with Stonehouse, because it is very close to this mountain up here. But we can probably go around that, because there's not all that much in this area we need to go through. So I think we're going to start here. So how I like to start new um, sort of free games every time. Just hide that. Uh, is I'd like to have a look at one particular city, because uh, if we have a look at the land use, you can see that we've got our residential here on the southeastern side, and the, nor the northwestern side is all uh, industrial, and then the commercial's right in the middle. So we could do a bus route that goes all the way through that. So I think that's a good place to start from. So we want to go as far away as possible. Uh, let's just do that. And go all the way to the end here, but uh, it's probably going to U-turn. But to be fair, it's probably going to U-turn that way as well. We're just trying to maximise our coverage here. So of course, this one in the commercial area, a bit wide, let's say the coverage. Um, and I think we're probably going to plunk one down just here. And uh, you know we're going to loop it back going through there. Now I don't need to do the bus stops on both sides. But I just prefer to, in case I ever need to run another bus line through that area, or anything like that, or reverse a direction, I don't have to place them down again. And I, I like the look of it. It looks nice. You know, it looks nicer with the stops on opposite sides. So, I, I realise I don't really need to do that. I basically double the costs every time I do it. But, yeah, it's something that I prefer doing anyway. Uh, so, let's put a, a, a depot down. Get our train depot. Oh, or bus depot. Not trains yet. Uh, I do actually want to kind of do trams as well. We're going to find a way to make trams uh, sort of useful, really. Uh, so let's uh, go over here. And we're going to go straight through the commercial district. Around to the industrial area, to the residential area again. And instead of going back down that way, I'm going to have it go through the commercial area again. So we kind of make use of this main road on both sides all the way through. And that's kind of the loop that we're going for. So that should cover the entire city quite nicely. And it's still got room to expand over there. So that, that looks good. This area down here looks like it could be good for a um, train station later on. But, you know, let's not get ahead of ourselves. So let's just name this one. So this is, this is Stonehouse. Yep, Stonehouse, so I'm going to name this line, and I want to leave this unnamed or I'll forget what it is. Um, Stonehouse can be STH. I like the three-letter code, kind of like airports and stuff do, like LAX and uh, DXB and um, NYC and... I, I don't know. Um, but STH, yeah, so that's the... Uh, it's going to stand for Stonehouse, and this is just going to be the bus service. So this is just going to go within the city, it's not going to go anywhere else. And let's see what buses we have available right now. So it's 1960 right now. So we have the Saratusha. I think that's how you say it. If you're Swedish, do let me know how you actually pronounce that. It's a T U with an umlaut on top. I think that's how you say it. But yeah, it's a T with a two, a U with the two dots. Uh, I don't know how you actually say that. I'm just going to put two buses on it for now. So, really, the idea here is I'm trying not to expand too quickly, or I'm going to end up going bankrupt, essentially. And let's just put the game on play. And let's just see the bosses coming out of the terminal right there. It's looking pretty good. The nice little chrome wheels as well. In fact, we could even colour the buses. Let's see, we've got this bus line here. We can colour these buses according to the route, I guess. So now they've got this sort of yellowy colour. I don't quite like that colour. Go with something lighter than that, I think. Yeah, that, that looks alright. The sort of banana-y kind of colour. Not the banana skin, but the banana sort of meat. But is that a thing? Banana meat? You know, the, the, the stuff you eat inside a banana, is it called banana meat? 
But yeah, um, so that's what we're going for. Sort of for the creamy kind of white yellow color, which uh, I think is quite nice. Fun fact, actually, there is a color just like that in Gran Turismo 6, I believe, or Gran Turismo 5, that's actually called banana. So there you go. Uh, so the line's going to take a little bit of time to establish. So in the meantime, what I'm thinking is we want to grow all, all these cities together. So I'm going to establish bus routes in all of these major cities. So we're going to have four bus routes going at once and let them establish within themselves and then we'll start doing intercity routes. Uh, that's going to be the main plan. So let's just uh, skip ahead and uh, see where this goes. Alright, so here we are now. And we've got four bus routes now working with within these four cities here. So... Uh, we've got TSK for Thirsk, we've got NWH for New Haven, STH for Stonehouse, and ADE for Aid, because it's only three letters long. Yeah, that's probably an easy one to abbreviate, to be honest. Uh, I think the name probably is an abbreviation anyway, but um, I've just also realised that that's actually Ackle, and... or Ackle? Ackley? You know what? Let's go it. I don't like your name. I'm gonna call you Aid. You are now just the city of aid. Gosh. If only could do that. Like, I can't read that word, so I'm just going to re rename it to whatever it is. Um, so that's that's four bus routes going. And that is going to take a little bit of time for passengers to start appearing. Uh, I don't think these buses have really um, picked up anybody yet. Uh, and that's a, the, that was the first one we did. So now that we've got these bus routes going, I think what we'll do is we'll speed up time for a little bit. And then we'll come back when uh, that is actually established. Alright, and uh, the first bus route that we've set up has actually started picking passengers up. So this bus is actually now half full. It's 7 out of 13. So that's surprisingly fast. Well, it took about a month. And that's generally how things go in this game. It seems to take a little bit of time uh, to get uh, things moving, getting lines moving. But uh, once it does... You can really start turning a profit. So this line is already going to need upgrading. In fact, we can actually open this up here and just see this bus service is currently carrying 13 out of 26. So the second bus is not doing so well. This bus seems to be doing okay. Um, it's a earning a little bit of money, but its uh, running costs are still pretty high, so it's still making its money back. But it will do that fairly quickly. The main thing, and you might have noticed as well, sometimes you stop at bus stops and the passengers don't get out. And that's simply because these passengers, they don't just go from point to point. They actually have their own destination. So if your bus route is efficient enough, they will pick it. In fact, that goes for all forms of transport. If it's within their means, like they can afford to do it, and it's the fastest, most efficient way of getting there, then uh, they will prefer to take that route. And that's basically how you succeed in this game, really, is making bus routes and um, all sorts of transport routes that people actually prefer to use. So these uh, passengers, only one of them got out just then as well. The other one clearly wants to go somewhere else. But you can see it's already having an effect on the city. They're already starting to, to like build up. So that's kind of cool, actually. But I do want to see uh, what else we can do. So the bosses are going to kind of do their thing for a little while, and I am actually going to upgrade a couple of these lines already. We can see Aid is already starting to pick up passengers now. Uh, New Haven and Thirsk is going to take a little bit longer, but uh, I think they should be going pretty soon. So you can see the age of the lines, it's about two to three months for them to really start picking up passengers, and of course I think the bigger the city is, that's more likely that they'll start using these things sooner. So I'm going to add a couple more buses. And that should really speed things up, um, at least on this line anyway. And I'll just have to quick check. I think that one's still in the default colors. So every time you add something, of course, having to color them all again. I believe it was this color that we were using. Uh, let's just double check that. Yeah, that looks good. So uh, this bus route's going to be all right for the time being. So now... Let's pick a new target. So we've got passengers moving along in these... these. There we go, Thursk has got passengers waiting now. So these little icons, by the way, that's not one passenger. That's a maximum of ten. So this could be anywhere between one and ten passengers, if you see one icon like that. So it's just multiples of ten. So basically, what I'm going to do for this episode is just get this line set up and have passengers moving between these cities, and then we'll call it a day for this episode. So... 
let's get on with it. Um, train services. Now, first things first, we want to look at a place to put this train station down. Preferably somewhere that has an active bus service already. And probably somewhere that is going to be cheap to build from. I'm just going to have a quick look at the contours here. So we want to avoid this hilly area right here. Let's just get rid of that. Uh, there we go. So, we want to avoid this hilly area here. So, we could go around it and then past Stonehouse, but we'll have to go uphill to get around it there, because you can see just in the trees there, I don't know if YouTube compression is going to kill this, but there is a very faint black line right here. So, this is actually an area of higher ground right here in the forest. So, we actually might have to follow the road, and then we don't have room to maneuver. So, it might be better to go on this side of the road instead, where it's flatter. So we could start here and then go out this way towards New Haven. That seems like the better option because that will give us room to go down this way to Thursk all the way across to Launceston later on as well. So we could do a western line there in future. In fact, I'm thinking Launceston might actually be the uh, place to put a bus service now too, actually. But as passengers start to build up on these bus lines, I am going to have to add more buses as well. So I don't want to limit the the expansion of the cities too much either. I'm thinking we could actually put our first station here in New Haven. Uh, just so that we get the room to expand later. So this seems to cover quite a wide area. In fact, that covers quite a lot of the residential as well. And a little bit of commercial. Just a very small touch of commercial. And there's an active a bus stop right there. If we connect it here, we only get that small area there. What about if we connect it here instead? That's a big area as well, but it's not an ideal place to expand if we want to go along the south side of, of the world. So um, I think this might be the way to go. And that will give us room to add... Um, well, I guess add more tracks as we go along, because we can add all the way up to eight, you know, in one station right here. I'm aware that we don't need this to be a pass-through. Um, in fact, now that I think about it, it might actually be better. Let me just double-check this. If we could put a terminal station down here, would that have better coverage? It wouldn't necessarily... But we would have to bulldoze this road, and I don't really want to do that. So that is a bit of a problem. It has decent coverage from this one road right here. Uh, I don't see anywhere else that we could really put that train where it would have better coverage than this. So it is going to have to be a pass-through station like this, but we really don't actually need it to be one. So, uh, that's a thing. Um, so, we're going to start with the standard rails. I know they're slower, uh, but we don't actually need the high-speed rails just yet. I'm just going to drag that out. And let's see where we're going to go with this. So, Stonehouse is over here. I think we're going to stay on this side of the road instead, definitely, because it's just far too hilly on the other side. So, we'll stay on the low, sort of, plains area. That's going to get the commercial district. Can we get something over here, maybe? That's mostly mostly residential. Uh, I mean, this could be all right, but there isn't really a bus line near there at all. That doesn't seem very useful either. Just trying to think, if the, if we could put one here, we've got, a, we've got one commercial building down there, but what I'm actually thinking we could do instead is add a street. So... Thinking of doing is it is going to cost us a bit because we have to demolish these these houses over here, but I think it's going to help the city out in a long way in the future. So we're going to drag that out there. There's a nice, neat little area that we can expand from there, and let's just bring that out straight like that. That one out straight like like that, and we can just connect these like that. And what I'm going to do is, and this is probably not the smartest idea yet because there is absolutely no coverage for this, but if I can, let me just see if it's going to let me do it, there's one spot there. So basically because there's no coverage here, I'm just going to add a bus stop in this area here. Uh, let's see, just here. And we'll just add that to the bus line on this side. 
So, where's that one go? So, New Street, that's fine. We can just add it after New Street on the way here. So, it's on the way back. They go through there. And, in fact, so that we can avoid it being too congested in the middle, we can actually add it after the green here as well. So, it'll go around this way. So we're making use of this road, and hopefully the city decides to expand along this street as well. Which they probably will. I've seen this happen before. So it probably should work. Alright, so let's just get the railway connection going here. So I'm going to drag that across. It's going to create railroad crossings, which is fine. And let's get this going onto this side. I'm going to just kind of follow the road along, but not too closely, because of course... We want it to connect somewhere around here. So it'll be as straight as possible. Because of course the the more bends you have in a track, the uh, slower the train will eventually go. Oh, I've just realized something. There is a huge dip right there. So we're going to be very careful about that because it is going downhill now. Um, so if we drag that out, yeah, you can see it is creating a bridge. So we're going to go towards this side because you can see the slope. That contour line is there, so the slope is actually much better there. That's probably why that road is going that way, too. Uh, let's just go down this way. It doesn't look fantastic with that sort of hump there. But uh, it'll help with easing the train along that way, I think. So we're going back up, by the looks of it. Or it might be maintaining its height. Uh, which is fine. So just subtle curve going back this way. That's not connected even in the slightest. There we go. And uh, bring that along to the station like so. So this station, of course, can be expanded pretty much infinitely unless they somehow build around it, which doesn't seem to happen very often. But they will hopefully build that bit up there. Right, so the next thing is, where are we going to put the station for... Let's just have a look. For aid. Where's the aid station going to be? I want this to be a pass-through as well, in case we expand further north. Uh, and if we want to extend this line out, then we can definitely do that. So I'm going to switch over to the land usage and see what we've got here. Now this looks... Like, it might be a useful position, because the um, track will have an easier way of getting in. We've got the room to expand. It doesn't cover a hell of a lot, though. That's the only downside of that. Now, I could just tuck it in like this. Oh, wow, the city's... It's almost like they were expecting me. They just built that right there. Uh, let's see. It's not the most useful, but it won't allow us to go up north either. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it this way. Let's see, something like that, and then the train can come in through like this. So it's not the best coverage, but it is a good position. I think this, you can just see, if we click that, you can see the road light up. So that is going, that is covering the train station as well. So passengers from this stop should be able to get to that station. That is a, sort of the maximum coverage there. So you can see it's just that very subtle lighting. I don't know if you guys can even see that. But you can see the sort of border around this road means that it is connected. So hopefully that works out. Touch our contour lines back on. Uh, so that's Stonehouse there. So we've got to go around sort of like this. So I'm just going to draw the track out. Now there's one issue with the um, Transport Fever's building system is that it lets you make some really nice shapes, but sometimes, like this, it's not really letting me do it at that angle. But if I do that, that's apparently fine. And it will continue sort of being fine. See, I can I can connect it like that and that's perfectly okay. But, you know, before, somehow it wasn't letting me do that. So there are some bugs with it, honestly. <laughs> but, you know what, we get there. We do get there. Alright, so let's bring that around. We're not even slightly pointing the right way. So I, that's not what we need to do. Let's just bring that over like so. So it has to go a little bit further out. It might be easier if we just build it out from here. Uh, let's just bring that down there. Try not to carve up the land too much, doing it in shorter bursts like this. 
Although, it doesn't look too bad, like the way it deforms the terrain isn't too bad. Like, it doesn't look completely awful if you do that. But, uh, yeah, I don't really want to do it too much. Okay, so that's going over too much. Let's just bend it back a little. And I think we can just safely connect it like that without any dramas whatsoever. So we've got a smooth track, a pretty smooth track. I, I can actually get rid of that kink there. Just get rid of that. We don't need too much kink on our tracks. Alright, so there we are. There's our track all laid out here. So we're going to need a line set up. I like how it's so, it's so wiggly around here just because of that contour that was there. And then here it's just straight all the way. Which, honestly, if you're doing a high speed rail, that would be very useful. But the speed limits would not be as kind, especially around this corner right here. But that's pretty good. And that distance isn't too bad. Okay, so there are a couple of preparations that need to be made here. Now, one thing that I've seen a number of people do and I don't think is particularly useful, is double tracking the entire thing. Which means, of course, taking uh, a track and just drawing it out like that. So you end up with two tracks like this. Uh, the reason is, if you have a look at the budget here, you do actually have property maintenance and things like that. You do have, uh, other than construction costs, maintaining these rails actually costs money. As far as I can tell, it actually costs money to do that. So you don't want to have too much of these rails because you do have to pay to maintain them. Just sort of think about it as like renting the rails or something like that and you kind of have the right idea. So that's how that's going to go. And I would like to be able to add more than one train to this. Not immediately, but at some point I would like to be able to do that. And if I'm going to do that, I'm going to need spaces for the trains to get past each other. Otherwise, they'd be stuck at stations. So what we're going to need to do is make something that allows them to bypass each other. This area is kind of going to be a little bit tricky for that. Um, but this is sort of planning for the future as well. So let's see. I think what I could do is drag it out from here. So we've got a little bit of a curve. That's completely wrong. Uh, let's just do that. A little bit of a curve. Come on. Uh, that should be just fine. And I'm going to make a straightaway like that. That is going to be about the length of a train. That's roughly the length of a train, I think. And if not, then this extra little bit here before the railroad crossing is going to be just fine for that. I think that should be good enough for the time being. And we're going to add one over here before this station as well. At the same time, we're also going to... One thing I want to do is make sure that these are all on the same side all along the track. So you don't want these to be too long, otherwise it kind of defeats the purpose. But you also want it to be long enough that you can have uh, trains on it that are of that length. Because, yeah, passenger trains, probably not going to be too long, especially commuter trains. But if you start putting freight trains on this line, they do get quite long. So that's where you might need to expand on that whole thing a little bit more. Um, probably going to add one more before this station here. I think that would be a good idea. Just before the station so that they can sort of wait for each other to finish loading and unloading and so on. Let's just bring that out like that. This one's a little bit long I think. But we should be fine. Okay, so the next thing you need to do is put signals. Now, I wanted to find one side of the track to always be one way. Um, that will be for the future if I have two tracks. So, to start things off, I want a place where the train can stop and let someone go past them. So, let's put this one right about there. And we're going to have another one just about there. So, that should give them enough space. And this one is going to be one way. This means that this side of the track on the right is always going to be going north. And then this one's always going to be going south. That means that when we switch over to uh, having two sets of rails, that's never going to change. The track direction is always going to be the same. Uh, I have actually made that mistake before. Where it's... Um, well, it's pretty much, yeah, you end up having to have a switchover point because the trains now have to go in a, on the different side of the track to what they normally do. 
Uh, and that gets very messy, and it's a very, very difficult thing to try and fix. So uh, we're going to go with this, and just put that one a little bit further along there. Uh, so yeah, this this bypass or overtaking point is a really, really big one compared to the others, but that's fine. It's not too bad, and we've got one more over here. This one's a bit small, actually, now I think about it. Uh, so this is going to have to go a little bit further along, and on here a little bit further along as well. Just to kind of make sure that they have enough space. I don't think the trains are going to be that long, but I'm kind of just using the platforms as a gauge. And that's roughly a platform length on that straight there. So that should be fine. It just looks a bit short. Right, so now we need a place for the trains. But before we do that, I'm going to plan out this line. So this is going to go from New Haven to Stonehouse. And all the way up to aid and you know what it can come back to Stonehouse along the way so we're gonna just be doing a commuter service three stops and that's it so that's going to be the NWH STH ADE line not the most imaginative line I do normally like to give them fancy names and things uh, but in this case this is sort of just works really uh, this can be sort of gray I think that's a really hard color to see Make that light grey. That works. Uh, and we're going to need vehicles on it as well. So I need to put a train depot somewhere. Um, I think it could go somewhere. Let's see the contours. It could go here without too many issues. I, I'm just going to put that one just over here. Just here. So that's kind of there-ish. It's a little bit far away, but... Uh, that will give us room to put two tracks on there when we need to. Uh, or at least have a place for two tracks to join along. It's Here's the other thing as well. Making joining tracks in this game, not the easiest thing. They don't seem to really like bending all that much. So that's a bit silly looking, that one. I'm just going to have that go out like that. Let's see if we can join it along now in a way that makes a little bit more sense. That's a bit better. Not great, but it's better. And then this one can come along like so. That will join just nicely. So there we go. Alright, so the next thing, I need to decide on a locomotive. Um, this is going to be a tricky one. We have the catenaries in place, so we can do electric. Let's just open that up. We can do electric, and we can do diesel. Or we have the option of doing steam as well. Now, steam is going to be a tricky one because this is not actually as powerful or doesn't have as much tractive effort as the equivalent electric, but it is cheaper. Marginally. But it's cheaper to run. So we could look at doing that. Um, and also the wagons that we use need to be taken into account as well because they have a speed limit. I do want to keep the speed up on this train as much as possible. Um, just to avoid choking up at any point so that they just get past each other much quicker. I think... Yeah, 17 to 20 is a significant enough number. So we're going to buy three of these. These are uh, BC4 carriages. And I, I don't know if I want to put the uh, Scotsman on here. This is It's quite tempting to use the Flying Scotsman because the running costs are very low. But... I could go with this uh, RE44 right here. This is 800,000 to run, but it does 125. So while we are limited to 120, it should accelerate fairly easily, and it's not really going to be too much of an issue. Oh, we've just reached 1961 as Zeta, and uh, we've unlocked the BR Class 37. That's going to be useful for freight trains, I think. I mean, I can just put any locomotive on here. It's not really an issue, but um, I do want to kind of keep with the theme a little bit. So, the E41 over here could be useful as well, 120 kilometers an hour. Um, it is more powerful. It's quite a lot more powerful for 160,000 a year more, but it's slightly slower because it does weigh a fair amount. But I think for a passenger service, we don't really need something uh, with that much power. It's not a very big train, after all. Uh, and this one will allow us to expand a bit more. So, I think I'm going to go with this one. So it's quite a lot of money spent, not a huge train, but everybody has to start somewhere. So let's color that green. I like the color green on these trains, I think. 
Uh, and let's just uh, center on that and set it off. So here comes our train. Oh, look at that. It really does look very nice in this green color. It really matches and everything. I mean, of course, the carriages are much longer than the locomotive, as you might expect, but it does look really nice. I mean, that said, those carriages would work really nicely with uh, a steam engine as well. It might look really nice. So we've got this train now heading off, making use of the electrical lines there. That's very nicely detailed. So we're heading all the way down towards Stonehouse now. And uh, it's all downhill all the way. I actually didn't even realise New Haven was up on a hill. Look at that! Look how steep that is. We're already doing 100 kilometres an hour. So... The driver might be needing to hit the brakes very soon. <laughs> but that's very, very nice looking. It's going to take a little bit of time for the train line to get established, of course, as it did with the buses. But I think it's a start. And if we get a decent passenger service going, we're definitely going to make the money. So... Hopefully it's not too early to be doing this, and of course you can see the bypass there, it's just going to um, really favour the northbound trains, but uh, it's definitely going to let us put more trains on here very quickly. So here it comes, the door's opening, and door's closing. You can barely even see it, it's right there, you can just barely see it. But yes, oh, before I forget, there is one thing that I can do. Now, we have logos. Can you see what it is? Oh yeah. There we go. Look at it. There's a little roundel. I, d I actually didn't like the um, how the logo looked on the locomotive when it was small, so I kind of just changed it to a little circle. But look, it's on the side of the train! It doesn't match the green colour, but you know what? I'm going to go with it. I like that. I actually really like it. And, uh... Yeah. But yeah, I'm going to leave this one here. This is Transport Fever. If you enjoyed the videos and, of course, you like this series, don't forget to hit that like button. And, of course, subscribe if you're new to the channel. If somehow you have found this channel through the series, do let me know down in the comments below. And, of course, if you're playing this game and you've spotted anything that I've done, you've got any suggestions, you've got any mods you want me to check out, do leave it in the comments down below. I will check them out. Thank you all very much for watching. My name is Panzer, and I'll see you next time.